So first of all, I have to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. Um, it's very much in the spirit of Carol Penson's talk yesterday, which unfortunately I could not attend. Um, it is uh, something which is uh, very classical and very easy to state, so I hope you will bear with me for a while because the questions I'm going to ask are really elementary. So, I will use uh, the Pohammer notation. So we consider positive numbers. And I will use uh, this notation. And then I will take uh, a certain uh, product and quotient of uh, such generalized uh, symbols. So, uh, So I have uh, four sets of numbers, all positive. The fact that they are positive is not uh, uh, a hindrance, it's just a question of uh, translation because uh, lying behind I want to, to, to get uh, functions with integral 1 in order to have a certain uh, uh, random variables behind. So and the length of the set my, might differ. So, uh, those of you who are interested in uh, the functions uh, which, which are given in the, in the title of my talk know that uh, this is a Mellon transform of uh, measure or Meyer, whatever you, however you pronounce, I think it's Meyer. Uh, uh, do you have an equality for equality in B and D? Is S, if you bound S between minus and D? No, no, because. Z z uh, this is uh, uh, th it's just in order to get the strip of uh, definition ah, okay. because of the gamma function. Okay. So this is uh, the gamma it's yes, yes, but uh, so the strip of definition in order that it is uh, okay. uh, the manner transform yeah. of a, of a certain function or a certain measure actually. So I will take some time to um, give the parameters. So we'll consider this function. So of course it's a bit, uh, it's a bit lengthy. So I have here one minus C one, one minus C n, B one, B p. And then I have here A1, AM, 1 minus D1, 1 minus DQ. In the variable X, so this is Mayer J function, which I, defi which I define through this, uh, this quantity here, because uh, on the positive half line, if you integrate and if you put some constant before, like in the uh, hypergeometric function, I find this. So uh, what you uh, might be beware of, and this is perfectly well uh, 
documented on the on several documents on the Mayer J function is that it is not necessarily a function in the true sense because it might have a singularity at one. So let me give an example. If you take uh, those two sets void and if you consider just the, quo the quotient of uh, A and B with positive S, and if you take say then the, the function is, uh, is this. So you have a singularity at one. Uh, and you have a support which is 0, 1 only. Uh, the function is defined perfectly on the half line, uh, but vanishes outside 0, 1. Uh, th those situations are, are well uh, documented. Uh, I think from Mayer himself. Whether the support is 0, 1, whether the support is 1 plus infinity. I mean, I consider the function, of course, like the hypergeometric, you can consider it on, a, on the line or on the complex, but I, I will uh, really uh, consider this function on the half line only. It turns out that there are enough uh, questions to raise in this framework. So uh, this can be characterized, and uh, whether one is a singularity. Uh, OK, so the question I am asking, the first question I am asking in this talk, is the non-negativity of f as a function, possibly with a singularity, over its support. Of course, uh, with, uh, <coughs> with the uh, um, normalization I, uh, I took, uh, this means that there exists x a positive random variable such that inside the definition strip, the Mellon transform um, of this random variable is m, m of s. Of course, um, here you have minus 1, which means that the density will be f of x divided by x. All right, so there is um, a certain literature on this subject. I might give some, uh, some examples. There is a survey, this was the starting point of uh, of my question on this uh, on this field by uh, Janssen, Svante Janssen. Uh, where such random variables are called uh, random variables with moments of gamma type. The point of view of, Jan of uh, Janssen in this uh, survey paper is not to uh, address uh, the positive question, but to give um, a certain zool zoology, mostly related to Brownian motion, where uh, such random variables appear. So let me give an example, which is non-trivial, interesting, but not related to uh, the, uh, uh, what I'm going to talk about later. But let me give it to you still. So if you consider a brand new motion, is so-called supremum process. Uh, 
And if you consider the area of this quantity, so this is certainly positive, from 0 to 1, of this quantity. If you take the area of Brownian motion, this is a Gaussian random variable. It's very easy to, to, to calculate the density of this variable. Here this is more difficult because it's related to something which is not Markovian, which, which takes into account the, the path, the path of the Brownian motion up to time 1. So you can compute this, and it turns out that uh, well, I take the square in order, in order to get an S. This is connected to, 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 to that with um, and C equal D. The empty set. So uh, this is something which is very simple. This is simply uh, the product of a beta random variable and a gamma random variable. So there is a Meyer function connected to this, what Janssen calls the Brownian supremum area, which is a confluent hypergeometric function. Okay, I give this example and I give another one, which is um, uh, a bit more related to what I'm going to talk about later. It's a, con it's a consequence of uh, Selberg's integral. Which can be formulated in this way, if you take any independent copies of a beta random variable, and if you take something which appears in uh, many, uh, many instances, I will take it to the power, mm, wait a minute, no, I will leave the, I will leave this. Then x is also of this type, by the Selberg's integral formula. More precisely, x square is of this type, like in the above example, with, um, again, c equals d, the empty set, and uh, a and b have the same cardinality. So there is a, the, the survey paper is very long, it is not exhaustive, and um, so what I want to address is uh, this problem. And, uh, so as I said, uh, I will do very elementary things, but still the question is uh, open, so I want to formulate it. So there is a formula for the gamma function. which is, uh, th th this problem has a, a certain literature which I will mention from time to time, which is constantly used and which is uh, uh, one of the most basic. So this is a consequence of um, several expressions for the d gamma function. Right. I think histori historically it is due to Malmsteen. So if you use this and if you plug this into the expression of m, then you get uh, 
Well, let's consider uh, first this, this case. The case where C and D are void, so you have only the positive part and you have something which is uh, which has moments of uh, all order. Uh, yes, so uh, a moment determinate random variable. So if you consider this case, then you can write this. Well, you can write it also in the general case, but uh, I, I'll start with this one. Then I have an exponential representation of this Mélin random of this Mélin transform, of this potentially Mélin transform, which is the following. I get rid of that by the normalization. And I have here a certain function psi a b of t, which is defined on 0, 1, is simply the sum of t a i, with a i here above, minus the sum of t b i. So i gets from, say, 1 to m, and here I take j and it will go from uh, 1 to n. So, um, I come from uh, this part of this kind of uh, standard integrals. Uh, this is called the Levy-Kinchin representation. Before I give the, the sufficient condition for the uh, non-negativity of f, um, I, I might just differentiate this. get an integral formula uh, for um, the function f, or the generalized function f. So we'll have something like this. So this is a starting formula for the problem, which is an uh, a direct consequence of that. If you differentiate, uh, if you write down what m of s is with uh, f, then you get the logarithm because of the exponential ch change of variable, which is here. And uh, you just uh, identify both sides, this one as a product of two Laplace transforms, and this one has a simple Laplace transform, and then you use the convolution formula. All right, so now um, when I have this, it's easy to deduce that if this function is positive, then f is positive as well. More precisely, um, you can bound, uh, well, it is, still, it is conjectured, I think. Uh, you can bound the zeros of f, the number of zeros of f by the numbers of zeros of, of psi. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, so f was your... Uh, uh, f is my potential density, okay. or my, my Meyer function, whose... Um, but you, you, you have the parameters of it or not? Yet? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the parameters here are, are, are a and b, of course. And I have taken this framework here, 
This is very important <coughs> for the question I am asking now. So thank you for your question. So I have m of s, which is the integral of x to the power s minus 1 against f. And I have this formula, basic formula, with a certain function which appears here. And if this is positive... positive for which values of t? Sorry. For which values of t is positive? positive? Ah, uh, sorry, t is in 0, 1. Very important. Yes, yes, yes. t is in 0, 1, of course. Um, because here I have e minus x and so on. So if I have this as a... Um, well, integral formula, it has several denominations, entails that f is positive. Um, now, um, the question is uh, if it is a characterization. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I, well, some, some guy uh, from Vladivostok, now in Israel, called Dimitri Karp, uh, does not know either, and he works more than me on the subject. And um, I don't know if other people in the world <laughs> are interested in that really, but anyway, um, I can prove it in the several, in this, I will consider the case where the two cardinals are equal. If it is one, it is obvious. Uh, it is obvious because it just means here, here you have one and one, and here you have a and b, and a is smaller than b, and this means that you have a beta random variable. And if b is strictly smaller than a, then you have something which is not positive. Now, something which is less obvious, but which is not difficult, is when you have m, m equals to n equals to 2. Then this can be characterized by the following. You have, I have uh, supposed that the, the, the quantities uh, do not simplify, which means that uh, the A and the Bs are all different. Otherwise, you just uh, erase the remaining terms, right? So this is equivalent to this. If you have this, this is equivalent to the non-negativity of, of this function on 0, 1. And this is equivalent to the non-negativity of this Mayer function. And you remember with the example I had given here, that this function might have uh, a singularity at 1. But the singularity is positive. All right. And what is uh, not beyond my abilities, but uh, Boring, but true, is p equals 3. But I, I cannot go further than that. And um, I might... But this is, uh, is this conclusion uh, uh, say, again, elementary for terms of a and b for n plus Oh, I think you might have... Transcendental. No, you might have had this as a sophomore student, because it's a, a nice exercise for second year students, which I like to give. There is no... Uh, Necessary, as far as I know, necessary, necessary and sufficient condition on the sets A and B so that this function is non-negative. But there's a criterion which is apparently due to Schur, Isai Schur, which was mentioned so often today, is that as soon as Yes, 
I gave this as a neural examination with no success. But it's, it's, uh, it's a nice exercise. Not very difficult when you know how to solve it, of course, <laughs> but, but it's a nice exercise for... Right. So it's, and there are a lot, no, not such many, not so many, but there are some conditions which are, uh, it, it, it is not, it, it is not, sorry? You have to assume that A and B are ordered. O ordered, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The sure ordering, I think, or a convex sure, I'm not very well aware of this. But anyway, this is uh, an equivalence only if P is one and, and, uh, or two. When p is strictly smaller than 2, it is no more an equivalence. So you have some uh, conditions which are given by Ismail. Which uh, um, makes this condition a bit, uh, which consider a weaker condition. But this is not my point. My point is only that. And uh, so this is the first open problem I wanted to state. You cannot check it numerically or mathematically what we put. Uh, I, I'm sure it is true. Yeah, it's very easy to check. Uh, I'm sure, but I, the problem, can, yeah. yes, but, but the problem for me is that I do not know how to solve it. And I want to give you an example where this is not true, but when one of this set is non-empty. So, um, I will go here. Uh, uh, Thomas, oui. but carp shows only in one direction. Yes? No, no, but um, this is not a result of carp. I'm sorry. This, this is very, this is very easy. No, but sorry, carp has the same condition on psi A B D. Yes, of course. But this is not, this is not really what he did. What he did is something else. He just mentioned this. But actually, this is, this is uh, folklore. I do not want. I put it this way. But the reason lying behind is the notion of infinite divisibility. But I don't want to... Yeah. Yes, but let, let me just keep on, because uh, uh, um, a theory which uh, I wanted to, to skip is that as, as soon as this is non-negative and has a certain degree of integrability, this will be true. But this is given by uh, the levy kinchin formula, but actually it's you can, you can prove this without using the levy kinchin formula, and this yeah. is what Dimitri did. Mm -hmm. But this is not really a new reason. But anyway, uh, okay. So now I want to give a certain uh, example related to a special function where the, um, uh, the equivalence is uh, no more holds. So I will start with the Weber. Schaffheitlin's formula for the Bessel function. So I write it down for you. So here I have um, uh, one empty set. So I have here A, which is um, one half C, which is, and here I have alpha non negative and uh, yes, oh, strictly smaller than alpha, sorry. So I have this, and then I have B, which has two elements, and D, which is empty. So this is a formula which, uh, well, which is old and which can be proved by the cell box integral uh, in a rather quick way. 
anyway, this, this is an example of, um, of uh, density on the half line, which has infinitely many zeros, the one given by the zeros of the Bessel functions, and whose uh, Mélin transform uh, is of the kind we are looking at, because, um, well, here are the parameters. But if you think a little bit about this formula, you will have the same, except that you will not be able to delete this, this, this part because of the integrability condition. But you have two plus at the denominator and one plus at the numerator. So if you take this, this is by no means the Mellon transforms of something positive. And uh, so this makes it positive, but um, the thing is that you lose you lose the positivity of that, which means that you have a function which is which has zeros and which tends to minus infinity at zero actually, and still this function remains positive. So I, uh, from this uh, basic example, you can um, expand a little bit and try to um, characterize say um, you have here alpha, you have here beta, you have here gamma, delta, and you have here this. So four parameters. Uh, and it turns out that this is equivalent to searching for a problem by um, Aske and Zege. On, on this. So this is a, a problem which is, I don't think it is stated in the book by uh, Paulia and Zege, but it, uh, um, it appeared uh, not so many years after. So this function is, of course, changes sign infinitely often in the on the negative half line, on the positive half line, so here nu is positive and mu is real. And the question which they asked, and which may be not very well posed because there is no apparent necessary and sufficient condition for this integral, for this running integral to be non-negative on the positive half line in terms of mu and nu. But if you could solve this problem, then you could characterize this family of random variables. I won't explain you why. Uh, it's, it's due to the fact that you have two terms here, and so basically you have Basel functions lying behind. It's, it's just an example, and um, the, I mention it because of the fact that it contradicts this conjecture as soon as you add something non-empty on C or D. All right, so, um, uh, I could go a bit further in this uh, direction, but I want to um, consider more general function, but um, where something more precise can be said. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Um, Okay, so I skip one topic. I thought I had more time, but I will consider so just one application of Mayer G. So I take the right function. So this is a Something like that. I have rho which is smaller, greater than minus one, and b, well, take it complex, but again, I will consider only a half line, so it's not really necessary, and z is also complex. 
So it is an entire function which, uh, with a certain genius and with a certain order, whatever. Uh, the question is the same. You can ask uh, whether it is non-negative on a positive or negative half line. So the question is solved. I won't give all the results, but um, let me just so I. I, I So, in, in some literature, uh, it's called the first kind right function for rho positive. For rho equals zero, it is an, exp an exponential function. Or for rho negative, it is between minus one and zero. Uh, and for the second kind, um, Oh, and I have to take the negative alpha line, sorry, because the positive alpha line gives an infinite number of zeros. Then I know that um, this is non-negative if and only if beta is itself non-negative. This is not difficult. Again, we have a beta random variable lying behind. Um, so since I lack time, I won't give the details for that. Just want you to uh, notice uh, this is the reason why I consider this function actually is that the um, Laplace transform is uh, uh, so, um, yes, so I have this. And here I will take a Z itself. It's a bilateral Laplace transform. So this is a meta Leffler function. Now, um, in, in terms of, uh, okay, so you have a random variable lying behind, and there is um, uh, a series of uh, fractional uh, of, or, or um, convolution uh, relationships between uh, those functions with uh, varying betas. For example, uh, you have this, which is, which is a So if you take the derivative in x of that, then you will have this. Uh, so this gives you that uh, if beta is greater than rho in the second kind, the function is uh, non-increasing. Now some question you can ask, and this is clearly related to the numbers of zeros, to the number of zeros of other white function is uh, how it behaves when it is uh, non-monotonous. So I consider the, the remaining case where beta is in uh, zero and rho, and um, I prove this. This is a uh, increasing then decreasing. So this is a topic I personally enjoy. It's called, it is called the unimodality. And uh, I think I will uh, uh, stop very soon. But uh, the lesson I learned for this topic is that to prove that a function is increasing and then decreasing is much more difficult than proving that it is monotonous. And so you need uh, all kinds of, uh, I might call them tricky. One of the tricks is the formula due to Carroll and Mwotkowski on the so-called mwotkowski caron laws, let me name it this way, which you mentioned yesterday. So, thank you very much. Please. Uh, one question and one uh, funny story. <laughs> so, uh, so, one question, it's not really a question, but um, 
uh, there are some people in computer algebra who are uh, playing with uh, linear differential equations, define height of linear functions, and they, they have some cases for which they are able to prove positivity, but they are not as with as many parameters that you have. So uh, Maxim said that for sure, case by case, you can kind of check it numerically, mm -hmm. but it's also possible to prove it with tools from computer algebra. So people like Veronica Pilvine, for example, in Austria, did this for uh, some formulas which are not too far away from some of But it's not with all the parameters, it's <coughs> in some cases. The, and the, the, the possible funny story is that, uh, so it was told by me by uh, Philippe Flajolet. So the, when he was a young researcher, he gave a talk uh, at uh, Just Turbine at Orsay uh, with Delange and people in the nursery on the Mélan transform. And, uh, so I learned, but uh, sorry to interrupt you, I learned the Mélan transform from Flajolet's uh, ah, survey. Okay, so so I, a... Gourdon Flajolet Dumas. Yeah, This yeah, is uh, yeah. one of my. Uh, Uh, lecture de chevet. <laughs> well, no, 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 not really, no, no. But I, I know the, the paper. Yeah, so, so Philippe did a lot to, to propagate this tool in, uh, in Netflix, for sure, but uh, it was existing before. And in fact, at the end of the talk, someone came to him and uh, said to Philippe, but you know, uh, Mélin, for sure, is a very French name, but it was, in fact, Yalmar Mélin. He didn't finish. Uh, uh, yes, and he was not only Finnish, but it was a phénomène. And phenomenon where people who are kind of ultra Finnish people because um, in oh. those years, in those years, uh, uh, Finland was under the domination of Sweden and they were fighting to defend their own language and so on okay. in a very strong way. So, so I think that <laughs> it could be funny for him to say that we say Mena and not Melin. All right. Anyway, me tagle fleur and Melin might not have been good friend. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But Mita Gleflo was not friend to so, so many people, I think. He was a kind of uh, over-the-top personality. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh yes. <laughs> anyway. Oh, sorry. Thank you.